Well, our new segment on Morning Cafe, this, I will guarantee you, will be one of your best every Tuesday if you make it a date. So articulated in the Finance Act 2019, turnover tax is a simplified form of taxation that caters for the informal sector. But just how simplified is it is one question we'll be asking this morning. It was first introduced around 2008 and later suspended as it had lots of teething problems with compliance and and enforcement now on business with uh, KCK that's exactly what uh, of course or this is the body that will be taking us through these processes every Tuesday we learn all what it is or what is there to learn about turnover tax and the numerous other forms of tax so we'll be having these sessions every Tuesday as I have said I can guarantee you it will be one of your favorite segments because then you will learn so much about a tax so Make sure that you keep it a date. And joining us for this conversation this morning is one of the key figures of KCK. And he will be taking us through what it is that we want to learn about turnover tax. Edwin Thiongo, tax lawyer, will be joining him on the other side of the studio so that we all get to learn and we all have that moment of asking all the questions that we'd ever want and anything to do with tax. You can be rest assured that we'll always be making it a date of making you informed. So make sure that you keep it right here. Importantly, that you keep us active by interacting with us. Hashtag Morning Cafe at Linda underscore Lela at TV47K. We sample some of your comments, we sample some of your questions as we proceed with the broadcast. Before we delve into the conversation or into the question answer session, let's take a look at this video that cues us to the conversation. Kamau is a shopkeeper in Komarok Estate. He buys his goods from wholesale stores in Isli and ferries them to his little kiosk where he sells to the residents of Akiba Court. His best selling goods are everyday utilities such as milk, bread, tissue paper, and over-the-counter pills. He believes his business is doing well because he is able to take almost 15,000 shillings to the bank every day after closing time. The money he makes from the shop accrues in the bank before he uses it to replenish his stock for a new week of business and to take care of his growing family. Kamal keeps things simple and tries to stay on the good side of the law for the sake of his family. What Kamau does not know is that he is eligible to pay taxes from his little business. He is supposed to round up all the gross sales he makes at the end of the month and pay 1% to the government as tax. This tax is called turnover tax. Turnover tax, TOT, is a tax payable by small businesses whose gross sales is more than 1 million shillings and does not exceed or is not expected to exceed 50 million shillings. Just like Kamau's kiosk, it is payable on monthly basis at the rate of 1% on the gross sales by the 20th day of the following month. Kamau is keen to ensure that his business is compliant. But just like many other traders, there are many misconceptions about this tax that stand in his way. For many traders, TOT compliance is often surrounded by questions such as whether there is need to maintain accounting records, whether the trader is exempted from the other taxes, whether the tax is applicable to sole proprietorships, among many others. Join Kamau in his journey as he seeks to answer some of these questions in an effort to make his business tax compliant. All right, there you go. And I'm sure by now you have an idea of what it is that we are discussing this morning. So make sure that you keep it right here. I encourage you to make phone calls. I mean, call and ask all the questions that you'd want to know about uh, turnover or turnover tax. Of course, the numbers will be running down on your screen. The SMS short code also will be sampling some of your comments as we proceed with the broadcast and take advantage of our social media platforms to drop those comments as we proceed. And you're looking at me, I'm holding newspapers. I'm sure Yongo must be asking himself, why am I carrying newspapers at this segment? Well, let me first again 
introduce you, Edwin Kiongo, tax lawyer, and also one of the key figures of from KCK. KCK mm. will be taking us through this session. Probably a brief introduction of the same before we delve deep into this and we look forward to more episodes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Um, my name is Edwin and uh, we practice tax at KCK. Yeah. One of the obligations we have is to ensure tax compliance uh, as tax agents mm -hmm. and therefore we spend a lot of time working with a lot of companies across different segments. But one of the things we've had over time is to make sure that the information relating to tax is made available. And I think I appreciate the partnership with uh, TV47 for a chance to have this breakfast show where we'll be discussing many elements of tax right. and try to break it down into, into a language that is easily understandable. And I keep saying that because tax is complicated in terms of how it's written, how it's implemented, mm -hmm. there needs to be a continuous discussion around taxes to make it easy. And sometimes I say with good information, it's easier for taxpayers to be compliant mm -hmm. because sometimes complying could be easier and cheaper than uncomplying. Right. And therefore in these sessions we'll be having a lot of discussions and trying to answer most of the questions that come from the public. The umbrella of what it is that we discussed today, you said it's a, your tax is... <laughs> so what, what, you, what, you, what are you are is what you owe. Okay. So and it's a theme we'll be running throughout this season and it's to try and explain how business models impact the taxes we pay. Mm -hmm. If you choose to be a sole proprietorship, if you choose to be a company, if you choose to be an LLP, all those have tax implications and therefore we'll be trying to delve into discussions of which model uh, tracks which taxes and which ones are most efficient for which industries. Mm -hmm. And even before we get to turnover tax, which mm -hmm. is what we focus on today, uh, I was just looking through the newspapers and the news that was there yesterday mm -hmm. that KRE now says they will decide to take back the what? The, the PIN numbers? for the mm. individuals that mm. fail to pay tax. I think it's mm. always fair mm. that we also start on what is trending true, in the world true, of business uh, before we delve into this conversation. Mm. What mm. would that mean? Uh, if you look at the Tax Procedures Act, which is the act that regulates how uh, PINs are allocated, you realize that the PIN belongs to the, gov to the commissioner okay. and that the commissioner has the authority to recall any PIN. And the commissioner also has powers to enhance obligations or remove obligations from the PIN. Mm -hmm. And I think the commissioner's call to recall PINs is essentially to remove from circulation PIN numbers that are not either in operation okay. or where taxes have not been filed. I think in the last couple of years we've been dealing with a lot of incidences um, at the Tax Appeals Tribunal where there are PIN numbers that are being used to generate fake ETRs. Uh, and I think it is these dormant companies that mostly Will, be for, will fall culprit to such schemes. And I think the idea of uh, recalling the, the, the PIN, uh, in my view, is a notice. And, uh, and I saw the publication of the notice to say that even if the PIN appears here, we are going to you know, uh, cancel it. Mm. And I think it's incumbent upon anyone whose name appears on that list to get in touch with the tax station and try to rectify the process or show cause why mm -hmm. the pin should not be recalled. Mm -hmm. And then on that, we close it at that. Probably we'll have that conversation some other time mm -hmm. and get to the conversation of the day. Turn over tax. Uh, one of the biggest questions that I've mm -hmm. come across, you know, I will be forgiven for not using mm -hmm. the best business <laughs> words, but then again, we cannot forgive you for not using the best business <laughs> words because you're a specialist. <laughs> Presumptive tax and turn over tax. The mm. difference between these two is still mm. a hula baloo for many. Oh, and, 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 that, and that's the case. And I think even in my own um, transitional reading from turnover tax, presumptive tax, first mm -hmm. there was a lot of confusion right. as to whether this regime was going to run together with the, with the, with the turnover tax. Mm -hmm. So to separate them, presumptive tax is a tax that was being imposed before commencement of a business year. Okay. So it was a tax that was tied to... The, the registration certificate, the, the, the business permit. Okay. And therefore, when you go to apply, in our case, uh, they say the case of Kamau, if he's going to apply for, for a business license, then he would be required to pay presumptive tax mm -hmm. as he gets this, this, uh, this, this, this certificate. But then the difference between presumptive tax is that presumptive tax wasn't final tax. It was sort of an advanced payment of taxes. Okay. Then at the end of the year, we would reconcile whether your income tax filings will be higher than the presumptive tax and you pay the difference. Mm. Different from turnover tax. Turnover tax is a final tax, meaning that once it has been filed, uh, paid on a monthly basis, it will not be paid again at the end of the year. Okay. And I think the introduction of, of uh, turnover tax 
for KRA perspective, uh, I think the idea was to try simplify collection. Mm -hmm. You can imagine presumptive tax would still require KRA to sit again and reconcile yeah. how much you've done and so and so forth. And therefore, it wasn't efficient. So the difference between the two is that turnover tax now came to replace presumptive tax. And presumptive tax was also repealed uh, in 2020. Yeah. And they introduced now turnover tax, mm -hmm. which over time now is also evolving as we try apply it and adapt it to various scenarios of business. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when you speak about it evolving, I noticed that there are scenarios where there was this conversation of the fact that uh, you know you it, you only have to part ways with 3% of what it is that you earn, right? Mm -hmm. And there are occurrences where I've been told it's 1%. So which mm -hmm. is which? Uh, so when they introduced turnover tax at the first instance, and you've rightly mentioned that turnover tax was first introduced in 2007, mm. but like many government policies when it comes to taxation, uh, I hold the view, and this is a personal view, that there has many times been insufficiency of our consultation and stakeholder engagement. Yeah. So turnover tax was introduced without laying ground for it. And first, it was felt that the rate of 3% was very stiff, okay. considering that you were taxing 3% of the gross, meaning that businesses were not allowed to subtract mm -hmm. or uh, deduct any expenses they were supposed to pay from the gross sales. Then there was secondly an issue of collection, and the relationship of this tax with other taxes. And of course, because of the VAT regime that requires a continuous supply chain, turnover tax became hard to implement. Mm -hmm. So the, the rate of 3% was the initial rate pr proposed in 2007. All right. But upon uh, being revised by the Finance Act in 2020, they decided to move the rate downwards from 3% to 1%. Okay. So the current turnover tax rate is 1%, not 3%. Only who is eligible to this? Uh, probably that would be the first mm. question we would have mm. asked. So if you look at how Section 12C of the, uh, the Income Tax Act is drafted, it says that turnover tax is applicable and the measure for who's, who it applies to mm. is twofold. One, you must be a resident meaning that the company must be resident in Kenya. Okay. So the rules of residency will say you have a permanent establishment, you have a physical office here, uh, you have either been in, the Ke in Kenya for an aggregate of a uh, number of days or an average of a number of days over three years. So there are rules of residency. So once you establish that rule, then it means if you're in this country, then your income is between 1 million and 50 million. Mm -hmm. Then you'll pay this tax. Okay. So those are the two main applica applicable principles. One, mm -hmm. residency, two, turnover. All right, okay. And then this would be the next question. Um, when you speak about this, what kinds of records are you supposed to put? Accounting records? Mm -hmm. uh, because then that amount of money or the amount of money that you speak of, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the mm -hmm. in-betweens between this particular mm -hmm. amount up to 50 million, then one would want to consider those ones are, you know, mm -hmm. small mm -hmm. businessmen or, you know, SMEs mm -hmm. or so this, uh, mm -hmm. to speak. Uh, what then records would one want so that one, you mm -hmm. say that this one would allow me, mm -hmm. you know, present and pay my turnover tax as mm -hmm. expected mm -hmm. and would probably, you know, put me on the right margin when mm -hmm. we speak of matters taxes. Mm -hmm. So if, if you look at uh, how this session again is framed, and, you, and, uh, and I think sometimes I keep saying that from a policy point of view, it's a t it sometimes doesn't make sense the way we draft our, yeah. our regulations and mm -hmm. laws. So section 12C is a very short section. I think it's a paragraph okay. or, or, or there about. So it then doesn't expound what is the expected documentation required for this tax. So KRA, you look at the website, they've tried to expound what, he, what they mean by simplified record keeping. Mm -hmm. So say you will keep sales ledgers or any, any document that supports your sales. But then, unfortunately, sometimes it's very hard for you to keep a specific kind of documents and not others because businesses are a continuous process. Mm -hmm. So whereas there is, a, there is a notion that it's going to be simply uh, businesses that are, that are supposed to pay this tax, uh, as opposed to keep a specific kind of records. Mm -hmm. The unfortunate bit is that without an expansion of what amounts to sufficient records, becomes extremely hard for one, uh, taxpayers to know whether they are fully compliant or not. And secondly, becomes hard for uh, the commissioner to pin a taxpayer down mm -hmm. for insufficiency of records. Right. Though I think the notion has been, if you're paying turnover tax, what we're concerned about is how much 
you're making in terms of gross sales. Right. So it's therefore the documents that support your gross sales that you're supposed to keep. And uh, in line with that question, uh, I say that the difficulty of implementing such a provision in terms of documentation is that turnover tax by itself does not exempt you from other taxes, mm -hmm. for example. Oh, that was my next question, which is like <laughs> you read your ma my mind, you know? Yeah. Uh -huh. So because it doesn't exempt you from other taxes, then it's not reasonable to say that businesses paying turnover tax have a simplified record keeping uh, kind of Funding. regime. Okay. But, the, but the truth is, these businesses will still have to keep records mm -hmm. for some other taxes, such as agency taxes, such as pay as you want. Right. You still have to keep your proper records of how you paying your staff, your deductions. Mm -hmm. uh, in some instances where you were, and I think we'll discuss that towards the end, new taxes such as the digital service tax, which might affect some businesses that are already paying turnover tax, okay. would require a continuous record keeping approach to it. Okay. And, I and therefore, I think from a document standpoint, it's hard for us to arguably say that if you're on turnover tax, your record keeping is extremely simplified. Mm -hmm. But a rider to that is that for purposes of corporation tax, okay. it is extremely simplified because once you have paid this tax, you do not file corporation tax. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, different faces of uh, people who are doing business. And uh, when I speak about this in layman's language, I am referring to, you know, those ones that registers as, uh, register as sole proprietors, those mm -hmm. that register as limited and all that. So uh, we have talked about the brackets in terms of monies mm -hmm. and in terms of these entities and how, you know, the formation of this particular entity is. Mm -hmm. At what bracket do you fall? A sole proprietor, mm -hmm. limited or what? Mm -hmm. So if you look at the 2007 regulations, they once thought that it was prudent to say that small businesses are sole proprietorships okay. and larger businesses are corporations. But I think that over time was one of the challenges raised by tax practitioners then and they mm -hmm. said, you know, mm -hmm. simply because someone is acting as a sole proprietor doesn't mean they're a small business. And simply because a company is incorporated doesn't mean it's a big company. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, rather it's a big taxpayer. Mm -hmm. So what has happened over time is that uh, when we came to pass the regulations in 2020, there was a fundamental shift in terms of classifying right. companies that were supposed to pay. So one of the movements was to move away from uh, the payment of taxes based on how you're incorporated. And instead said, it doesn't matter how you're incorporated. Mm -hmm. What we care for is you are supposed to pay a turnover tax if you're within the threshold of 1 million to 50 million. Mm -hmm. And secondly, if you are resident. But of course, in terms of revenue, a revenue point of view, which is what we look, which is now the current point of view when it comes to determining taxation, the Act then exempted specific sources of income from turnover tax. So for example, people who are charging professional fees, management fees, yeah. uh, people who are getting rental income, and any other income that is subject to withholding tax, All right. they are not supposed to enroll for the turnover tax. For example, for lawyers, for, for accountants, uh, for people with uh, commercial buildings. They cannot enroll for turnover tax. And I think the obvious reasoning is in terms of keeping sales records, it's very difficult because if I consult for a client today, uh, there are very right. slim chances that uh, if someone was to come and audit backwards, they're able to identify how much gross sales we've made. Okay. And therefore, for such, uh, for such kind of uh, incomes, uh, they are subjected to withholding tax, mm -hmm. and this withholding tax, of course, is uh, is not final tax. It's a percentage of what you pay. Then, at the end of the year, you reconcile. Mm -hmm. So, to answer your question, we have uh, significantly moved from entity-based. Uh, determination of turnover tax right. to revenue based. Okay. Yep. All right. And I hope someday we land on, you know, this uh, filing of taxes processes because I can mm. tell you most of the Kenyans do not file because mm. it is quite a hectic process, mm. not really hectic per se. They mm -hmm. say they've simplified it, mm. but I guess it's only been simplified mm. for the people who are well conversant with matters business. Mm. Mm. And therefore it's important that someday, and this is actually something that one of the people, uh, you know, one of the viewers mm. or someone who's following us on our social media platforms, you know, mm. asked of. Mm. And so we hope for that. Um, is this payable monthly? You said yes. Mm. But then the question would be, is it before you deduct what mm. the, the deductions or prior mm. Mm. Or, or, or after? Uh, so, so the regime of turnover tax uh, initially they said it was going to be quarterly. So, after every, every three months, you'd file your taxes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But of course, because KRA is trying to simplify this, and you remember uh, the assumption that people paying turnover tax are smaller businesses yes, uh, yes. in terms of scope. 
Uh, so they, it was hard for them to reconcile their records after three months, and there was, mm -hmm. was a lot of default. So turnover tax is paid on a monthly basis, but it's paid on the gross. So that means okay. in the case in our case where Kamau is selling product X mm -hmm. and uh, he's made a hundred thousand from selling that product, then the KRA expect him to file taxes one percent of the hundred K. Okay, Nothing on the gross. With, yes. So he uh, he's not allowed to take out any expenses, any cost of sales, he simply pays 1% of that. And I think that's why they're saying that the regime itself is simplified. Mm -hmm. If you were to compare that with a company that is paying corporation tax, they'll be required, for example, to keep records mm -hmm. of all their purchases, keep records of all uh, their operating expenses, then calculate that and say, after subtracting all our expenses, mm -hmm. we're left with this much and you're paying 30% on it as income tax. Mm -hmm. Now, to try run away from the complexity of record keeping, they said, let's do this. Let's move the rate from 30%, okay. take it to 1%, then you pay without deducting anything. Mm -hmm. So the, the argument that you have to make when you come when it comes to paying turnover tax is whether paying 30% of... 33? 30 percent okay. for, for corporation tax. Okay. So you say, I'm trying not to pay 30 percent because 30 percent of the overall net might be higher than mm. 1 percent of my gross. Okay. And that's a calculation that a lot of people put in place before they make the decision that to pay turnover tax mm -hmm. or corporation tax. Now, I must mention that turnover tax is an optional tax. Mm. That means you can write to the commissioner and tell the commissioner you do not wish to, to register for turnover tax and you want to pay corporation tax. So okay. And therefore, it's elective upon Select. businesses. Okay, okay. And that's why businesses many times will want to calculate and see what does this mean for us in terms of uh, final profit to the business. Mm -hmm. And if 30% of the net is more higher, it's lesser than 1% uh, of the gross, and perhaps they love to pay for corporation tax. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, because we're going even for the tiniest of details, then one mm. would say, okay, well, monthly, is there a certain specific date mm. that we're looking at mm. when we're looking at next month and mm. next month so mm. that we do also do not go on the wrong side of mm. the books? Absolutely. So it is paid on the 20th of the next, of the, of the next month. Okay. So to say, mm -hmm. if I make sales in January, in, Febru in February 20th, I should have paid and file my taxes. Okay. Now, of course, if you fa if you fail to p to f if you fail to file your taxes uh, before the twentieth, there's a penalty, and the penalty is one thousand bob per month you've not filed right. until you filed it. Mm -hmm. There's also a penalty for if you file but don't pay, so they charge you uh, five percent as interest for 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 late payment, mm -hmm. uh, and of course uh, any subsequent non non payment is 1% of the principal that you're supposed to pay. Mm -hmm. So those measures have been put in place to try and ensure that taxes are paid in good time okay. uh, by the 20th. And I think that's a common uh, date, even when it comes to VAT, I think the date is around, is 20th. Mm -hmm. So uh, similar tax on, turnover tax on the 20th of every month, they should be able to calculate the taxes and remit them to, to carry. Mm -hmm. mm. All right, uh, could we have a random picture of how then you file your returns because mm. Uh, that is equally very mm. important. Mm. Mm -hmm. so, the, so the Kenya Revenue Authority has tried, uh, and I'll say try because if I compare it uh, across the region and across mm -hmm. Africa, I think the Kenya Revenue Authority is amongst the better managed authorities in terms of simplifying tax payment. Okay. Now, the iTax system is a very straightforward system in terms of how you can pay. Mm -hmm. They even have the um, mobile platform so you can pay your turnover tax, and the processes are very straightforward. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe the next time we have the session, we can try to um, have a back screen of to just demonstrate how it's done. Mm. Uh, but my biggest concern when it comes to the simplicity of the systems is that you, user education is very low. Mm -hmm. And that means that the commissioner is not spending enough time engaging stakeholders and explaining to them how to file these taxes mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. So in terms of filing taxes for turnover tax, it's very straightforward. You log into your iTax portal, you, you pick, you want to pay your turnover tax. You're supposed to, so it, it's a guided process. You're supposed to, to put in how much, um, how much you've done in, in gross sales, then the system will calculate for you, then tell you how much you're going to pay. Then the rest of it is next, 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 until you generate your PR, PRN and eventually go and pay the mm -hmm. taxes. So they also allow payment by by M-Pesa as, 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 as a platform payment, so which again makes the process a bit easy for smaller traders who do not have the, you know, they are not tech savvy to be able to go to 
iTax, go to the bank, process the payments, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So the process is indeed simplified, but I think that we can do a bit more in terms of user education. Mm -hmm. And we're hoping through platforms such as Business with KCK, we are able to begin this discussion where we're able to answer some of these questions. And I remember when you discussed this and said that sometimes it's the simple things we assume are, are simple for everyone, but a simple thing for myself and yourself can be an extremely complicated thing for someone else. Right, yeah. Most of someone who's trying to run business and trying to make a profit while still pay taxes, mm -hmm. it can be a bit difficult. So I think there should be a bit of facilitation in terms of helping those businesses that are willing to be compliant, mm -hmm. to bring them on board and assist them in terms of paying. Right. So I'm not sure uh, whether the, the response team by the commissioner uh, has been very proactive in terms of reaching them, in terms of being able to assist them. Uh, we've been trying to run away from telling taxpayers to go and queue at KRA mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. get assistance because if I'm a sole proprietor, I close my shop to go to KRA, then really, then, then that uh, month they might not be able to pay anything. So KRA needs to move from Time Star, from CBC, from Samia and come closer to the people, the people so that mm -hmm. people can understand how this is done. All right. And yeah. streamlining these processes. And this is one thing that probably has been looked at as a fa as failure, you mm. know, in the end of KRA. And sometimes track records, it's been hard mm. to, unless someone pays mm. it first and then you can realize that there was this sole proprietor somewhere mm. and who paid this month has not mm. been paid this month. But mm. in most cases, some of them will not even register. Mm. How then do we get the tracks of all these individuals? Mm. How then do we entice them mm. to take advantage of this? And in the event that they do not, over mm. time, mm. just how dangerous would it be for mm. them? Those are three questions mm. that mm. we come to answer mm. after mm. this short break. Barinjema kutoka kwa Morogo Raukia siku njema na tunukiwa offer kila siku. Pata offer zote mahali pamoja. Ili uonge zaidi, utume SMS zaidi na uprouse zaidi. Wewe usijali. Tuma namba ya kila supplier kwa hiyo sopo. Enda jubla nitaongea na kila mmoja wao. Very good. Piga star 444 as utunukiwe credo dapo dapo. Raukia siku njema na tunukiwa offer kila siku. Oh, hi. It's not what you're thinking. It's a cup of coffee. Coffee? Movie. Together, coffee with movie. Every Sunday, 8 p.m. on TV 47. Where we bring you interesting, enticing people. Well, we've concentrated on musicians. Yeah. Yeah. Producers. So now I manage because talent management and events management, I think, mm. was my passion. Mm. Right about now, we want to go beyond to the counties and to other countries. I'll see you. Let the sun stand still like Joshua time for three hours. But this time for only one hour, we bring you coffee with movie. Interesting, enticing guests. I'll see you. Now the other thing Mombasa, Kisumu, Nakuru, Tonda, Uganda, Magufuli Land, Kivet, you never know. It is coffee with movie. Before the markets open, 
farmers begin their day, each with the desire to produce the best. But how can they increase the numbers, maintain the standards? I told you garlic in a fight, toy, that standard garlic. Reduce the cost. We spread our risk. And yet remain the best. Kilimo Diaries. Every Sunday when the clock hits 7.30 p.m. I asked, and this in regards to just how much has been done towards making people know the existence of this uh, kind of tax or this form of tax and how much they are taking advantage of the same and knowing how crafty we can be and how sometimes businesses can be tough to run then you realize that most of the people would opt to you know run mm. away from this and you know mm. how then would this impact on their businesses in mm. the long run uh, well i think i said the question of user education mm -hmm. is I think it's one of the more fundam fundamental uh, challenges that the commissioner will have. Yeah. And sometimes when I do policy work um, and I have to engage, for example, in reviewing bills and giving my comments, we always say that a big percentage of taxes is getting the goodwill from the taxpayers yeah. to pay these taxes. Mm -hmm. You remember that 95 or thereabout percent of the taxes in Kenya are collected through self-assessments. That means these are individuals who log into iTax and self-declare and say, yes. this is the amount of tax we owe the commissioner. But incidences of default in many, in many times arise because of lack of clear information, yeah. lack of clear understanding of what this means for, for the taxpayers. Mm -hmm. For turnover tax, the drive has been that for the smaller businesses, they, re they need to enroll to the turnover tax regime, mm -hmm. and the commissioner has tried on its website and uh, in the tax in the in the small uh, in the SME taxpayers forums to try and explain the advantages of these taxes. Yeah. But I think the clarity of just how to take advantage of these taxes is a question that, for me, isn't still very clear for uh, for, 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 for from a taxpayer's point of view. So remember that. These businesses are businesses that are buying from uh, sellers who are charging them VAT. So presumably in other jurisdictions such as South Africa, for example, you'd say that turnover tax regime gives you exemption. So in the sense that if it gives you exemption from VAT, okay. then it means your cost of running the business is a bit yeah. low. In our country, and uh, the current regime of, ta of ta turnover tax, there is no clear legal exemption from VAT. That means I'll still buy from a supplier who's charging me VAT, okay. but I am not expected to charge VAT, but yet I'm not That's allowed not to too. factor in the VAT cost you've incurred. Right. So I think in terms of taking advantage of the process, the commissioner perhaps needs to clearly come out and say, our treatment for VAT purposes, if you purchase mm. and you have VAT uh, inputs, what are the treatment for, what is the treatment for that output tax? Mm. For that input tax rather. And then have a methodology where turnover tax as a regime by itself is a standalone regime. Okay. The in between it and VAT, in my view, is creating a lot of compliance problems. Mm -hmm. So what you're likely to see is a lot of taxpayers due to lack of understanding will or to, for lack of a better word use shortcuts to achieve the overall tax position for them to you know pay pay turnover tax they'll have to for example under declare what their gross sales are because business and competition is tough now the other huge challenge and i think it has been experienced by businesses that are paying vat is in the sense that when it comes to competing in the same market, if I am on a turnover tax regime, that means I am supposed to take my product free of taxes. Okay. So let's take uh, person A and person B. If person A is selling bread, uh, assuming, assuming that, that was a scenario that is possible, you're mm -hmm. selling bread for 100 shillings, and I'm selling bread for 116 shillings, what are the odds that a customer will buy bread for 116 and not 100? And not 100 so yeah. there's of course the challenge of go to market disparity okay. where people in the same industry but performing differently for purposes of uh, revenue are unable to compete on equal grounds because those who are paying turnover tax seem to have a better advantage. So to answer your question as to the user education and the support to make sure that this tax stands and continuously 
uh, becomes uh, one of self-assessment where the compliance is from goodwill. Mm -hmm. I think the commissioner needs to do a bit, a bit much more. Okay. It's been one year of running this tax, but I think there's a lot of room for improvement mm -hmm. in terms of tweaking it so that it, uh, it addresses some of these concerns. Mm -hmm. And even before I get to who is supposed to pay for this tax or what business is mm. and who is not, maybe just pinpointing or picking up on mm. some examples. First, things first. Uh, when we're talking about about 1 million to 50 million, mm. once you close or you cross that bracket, mm. because, well, businesses are there mm. to grow. Mm. So once, you know, in as much as it's a sole proprietor or what it is, mm. it crosses that bracket mm -hmm. and it becomes maybe a 5.1 million mm. what happens so so the assumption is that so, so so let me go back in terms of the history of how this tax came into being. yes so initially when you had the vat the vat act said you can only register for vat if you're doing a turn of five million mm -hmm. and above and therefore mm -hmm. There was a gap excluded. Businesses with under five million were not eligible for VAT. Okay. But over time, uh, the reality is that the government is trying to push for increasing the collections, okay, yeah. and therefore one of the targets the commissioner has had is to increase the tax base, meaning that those who are still doing business but are not paying taxes should be brought in mm -hmm. to contribute to the treasury basket for taxes. Now, if a business under the turnover tax regime grows beyond the 50 million threshold per year, mm -hmm. then they are supposed to be enrolled into a different system, which is the VAT system, and they start paying corporation taxes at the end of every month. Mm -hmm. Now, if to say a business that is earning 50 million a, a year, uh, if, we, if we do that calculation is approximately 4.16 million, million okay. per month. Mm -hmm. So a business is doing 4.16 million per month is relatively not a small business. It is not. It's a business that has enough systems. Mm -hmm. So there are two things that will trigger businesses moving out of this bracket. One is a simple calculation of business model. And I've said, if I am already 30% of my net is less than 1% of my gross, okay. of course I'll opt yeah. out. Mm -hmm. And you'll find that there are a lot of businesses within that bracket that have opted not to pay turnover tax. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the lack of clarity on these questions we're raising as to how to implement it that people are opting many times to stay out of it. Mm -hmm. So of course, to answer your question, if a business goes outside a 50 million and does 51 million uh, per year, then the commissioner expects them to, act, to apply for enrollment into the different regime of mm -hmm. corporation tax mm -hmm. and they become VAT compliant. All right. Mm. Okay, so that other question that I had raised, uh, who cannot, in terms of uh, what business cannot mm. apply for TOT mm. and what business should or mm. can, mm. yeah. So the, so the professional services, um, uh, such as law firms, okay. such as accountants, um, such as doctors who are doing consultancy, uh, for them, because they do not deal with inventory, for accounting purposes, it will mm -hmm. be very hard for you to collect from them because in terms of determining sales, uh, there is no okay, movement. No movement right. Essentially, they are selling knowledge and okay. you can't mm -hmm. uh, qualify how much has been sold in a given month. Right. So if you tell these businesses not to maintain records, then the challenge you run into is that for professional services, mm -hmm there is a legal requirement okay. for them to maintain records. For example, for lawyers, you must keep a client's account and you must keep an office account, you must keep the client's file. There's already a lot of regulation around document keeping. Mm -hmm. And therefore, turnover tax is not appealing for lawyers because it doesn't in any way simplify the process. Then secondly, for professional services, there's a lot of confidentiality in the work they do. So if you want to evaluate their taxes, for example, Asking for their gross numbers would be hard because most of them are also protected by um, privilege, like for lawyers and doctors and so on mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. So therefore, professional services are excluded from paying this tax. Secondly, management fees. And management fees are uh, real estate, for example, real estate brokers, uh, hedge fund managers, people who are getting paid for managing property on behalf of that parties. Again, for the obvious reasons, for the lack of inventory, for the lack of propriety in terms of uh, uh, de-risking, in terms, in terms of de-risking uh, documentation of the process, it's not possible for this law to be applicable because there are other laws that regulate how that should be done. Then for these two class of uh, taxes, already there existed a regime 
that was supposed to adequately enable KRA know how much a uh, professional body has made mm -hmm. at the end of every year. So they would do is they say you take five percent, for example, for professional fees, five percent when you're paying, for example, a consultant, you are allowed you're supposed to deduct five percent as withholding. Then you give that to KRA. Mm -hmm. Then KRA at the end of the year is able to calculate five percent of whatever they are holding okay. and they're able to know how much that consultant has made in a year. So I think to avoid interfering with that system, amongst the other reasons I've given, uh, they are excluded from paying this kind of tax, from, from turnover tax. Mm -hmm. the, the rest, of course, is rental income. And rental income uh, is for obvious reasons. There's already a robust regime mm -hmm. that is, has been put in place for rental income tax. And therefore, uh, under Section 15, you'll see that they try as much as possible to avoid interfering with an existing uh, rental collection regime. Mm -hmm. uh, then the last one, of course, if any other payment that is subjected to withholding tax, to protect the withholding tax regime, either for VAT, uh, or mostly for corporation tax, they would want to keep it away from turnover tax because turnover tax then can essentially dilute the other regimes that the government has been using to collect taxes. Mm -hmm. So the qualification is that, is that, is that blunt, and uh, you would have expected that there is a long list that is based on industry, based on world, but unfortunately, it is purely generalized. And I think some, some of the challenges we're having is that people are not able to clearly place themselves yeah. either in turn of a tax or another regime. Mm -hmm. Not because they don't want to buy things, sometimes it's the clear lack of knowledge in terms of how to do it. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. And uh, we're having so many people, you know, uh, getting into the digital space. Mm. And uh, it's, it's still not clear mm. as to what plays out, especially mm. on the digital service task, mm. uh, tax that we're talking about. Mm. Probably you can take us through that. Mm. And you know, most of these people that want to assume business-wise mm. would fall under this mm. a bracket where they're supposed to pay for the turn of the mm. tax. Mm. Stand corrected. No, no, that, that's very correct. Yeah. And amongst, amongst the issues that when, when uh, last year when they passed the, they passed the digital service tax yes. uh, mm. under the Finance Act, one of the questions that was raised is the applicability of this tax. Mm -hmm. Now, when, when, they were cra when we craft laws and, we, you know, we, we should not have this old school mentality that um, small businesses are informal businesses. And, and, and I think that mentality has really prevented Treasury from being able to take advantage of regulations before they are passed. Okay. And determine what is the longer scope of what we are currently doing. So one of the things that was overlooked during the passing of the digital service tax is that most of the smaller businesses, the ones you'd call um, the modern, the internet entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. are either running e-commerce shops, and there's a lot of business happening on the e-commerce platform. Mm -hmm. And for you to explain to them how digital service tax will work against turnover tax and whether there's an exemption, that question has not been clearly answered. And I, want, I don't want to say that there's an answer to it because if you look at the regulations on the digital service tax, the exemptions given are based on industry. Mm -hmm. And they are based, for example, they would say if you're in the extractive industry, you're exempt. If you're offering financial services, you're exempt. I would have hoped to say, I would have hoped for it to say that when it comes to protecting the smaller budding economy mm -hmm. that are paying turnover tax between this much and this much, then these regulations will not apply okay. to turnover tax. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, with that, without that exemption, it cannot be implied upon to mean that mm -hmm. there is such an extension given. So what is likely to happen is, we are taking, we are giving in one hand and saying, oh, we are giving you a regime that is free of uh, complications, mm -hmm. free of documentation, free of accounting records. But we're introducing another regime that requires you to consistently keep proper records. Right. So the digital service tax defines uh, businesses uh, that are affected by it as a marketplace provider. Mm -hmm. So you see, you're a digital market space, meaning that you are in the business of facilitating transactions by bringing together a buyer and a seller on an online platform okay. for them to, 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 to sell commodity. And that business model is a common model amongst the Kenyan youth. One, they don't have res the resources to go and buy uh, you know, items uh, with hard cash, put them in a warehouse somewhere and sell. So they're likely to come and say, I have X number of followers. I have already a shop. 
I simply want to, you to come and put your stuff online on mm -hmm. my shop. Mm -hmm. When I sell, I'll come pick from your shop and give to this other person. Okay. Now that particular person is supposed to be paying a digital, digital service, tax. service tax. Notwithstanding, you told them, we are keeping a very simplified accounting system. We just pay us 1% and you can go into the business. Okay. If you tell them to monitor the payments and withhold from whoever is, is, is um, and the money be withheld by the person paying them, then essentially they end up having a more complicated system mm -hmm. than even that over corporate. Over corporate. Right. So I say sometimes that it comes to the passing of legislation because our legislation is not long term. Okay. And the Finance Act is passed every year, every year, every year. So we even don't give it time for it to grow deep enough for us to say we're at a place where now we can introduce something else to ride on this. Mm -hmm. So I'll not be surprised that coming next year or the year, uh, this year or next year, one of these, either of these taxes will have to be adjusted right. to give way for the other. Mm -hmm. Now, should we do that? Of course, all the companies that have invested in the turnover tax regime, for example, need to make adjustments. Okay. And that has been the biggest problem when it comes to passing tax legislation. There was a proposal um, that Treasury be barred from changing tax laws every year. Right. I think that makes sense. So why do you mean to need to change it every year? Give us at least three years of if, trying to implement it. If it's it. not working, if it's not working, then what? If it's not working after three years, after three years we'll we... come and say, from a business point of view, okay. we have tried, it's not working. Mm -hmm. Then you give businesses a chance to also de-risk from moving from one system to the other. Okay. Remember, every time you pass a tax, for businesses to comply, They'll engage consultants like us. Mm -hmm. They're going to buy systems. They're going to do a number of things. They're going to change the market strategy. That is so nice. if after every year you keep changing the taxes, then the cost of compliance become high. Yeah. And I think one of the default problems you'll see, especially in the in turnover tax, will be those players in the digital market space. Mm -hmm. There is an expected outcry because the 1% isn't really 1%. Okay. Because it's 1% having really spent way. a lot of money yeah. to comply mm -hmm. with the regulations. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what's what's going to be the 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 the, uh, the, the overhaul of uh, of uh, the turnover tax the right. digital service tax, but I think there should be a process of rethinking what exactly this means for the turnover tax regime so that we bring people into the digital service tax but again do not affect what they've currently been doing in terms of turnover tax. Mm -hmm. mm. You speak of the price of compliance, maybe as we close this one, mm. uh, pretty much a tight win. Not mm. necessarily, you know, in terms of uh, money, but mm. generally even mm. the processes and all that. And while mm. we argue mm. that we have, uh, you know, iTax that is mm. making things pretty much easy, that e-citizen things are pretty much easy, mm. I can almost guarantee you, even mm. with the simplest thing of filing tax returns for mm. people who are employed, mm. it's quite mm. a hard mm. task. Mm. No, for sure. I, I think, and, uh, and I keep going back to the point that taxes should be paid out of goodwill. Yes. So, for example, agency taxes, and, 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 uh, and I'll explain agency taxes are taxes that we are paying or collecting on behalf of the government mm -hmm. and paying to the government. There is no incentive. There is absolutely no incentive. For example, the KRA will, app will appoint me as a withholding agent, for example. Mm -hmm. But there is no one incentive that I get from collecting taxes for the government. Now the challenge is, if I pick up this incentive, if I pick up this responsibility to collect for KRA, then I must ask myself the question, do I need to hire an accountant to do this job? Mm -hmm. If I hire this accountant, will the government reimburse me for hiring this accountant? So we find a lot of companies now, their tax department yeah. has five, six, ten people. But who's meeting the cost of paying these 10 people? It's the same company. Mm -hmm. What incentive are you giving them for them to continuously collect this money for the government? Nothing. So it's the same thing that the cost of compliance, even for town of tax, mm -hmm. the cost of compliance should be one of the things that the government readily addresses and continuously work with stakeholders to make sure that 1% is 1%. Right. You see, we don't say 1%. There's an additional 0.5% in cost of compliance where we need to figure out this, we need to figure out this, we need now to think about how do we affect PSY1, how do we affect digital service tax and so and so forth. So those questions need to be addressed so that a system of tax will work well where the cost of collection is very low and there is goodwill from the public to right. collect that tax. Mm -hmm. In summary, Edwin, as we close it, call to action. Um, well, my biggest call to action when it comes to turnover tax is that 
with the understanding that we've given, turnover tax by itself is a very good tax right. because it removes the bulk of tax problems in a business. Mm -hmm. I do feel there is need for uh, taxpayers to continuously engage with the commissioner, mm -hmm. but more or less make a determination as to which tax works best for them based on the structure of business they are handling. Now, when it comes to access to information, the biggest call to action, and maybe the takeaway from this, from, uh, from, from, from this show today, yes. is that we as practitioners in the space, you as journalists in, 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 uh, in, 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 in business, we should be able to continuously provide access to this information mm -hmm. and begin a conversation where people understand more or less how tax filing looks like and what it means to be tax compliant. Yeah. I've always had, uh, maybe as a parting show, I've always had uh, people discussing how to do business in Kenya, that it's easier to do legitimate business. Mm -hmm. And the truth is that, you know, because, because of the presumption of complexity of, 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 of taxation, People presume that being non-compliant sometimes is easier than being compliant because mm -hmm. when you become compliant, you have all manner of problems. But in our view, the cost of cost, the cost of compliance mm -hmm. is a very very small cost. But it can only be realized if the taxpayer is well informed. Mm -hmm. So in the sessions we'll be having, we'll be trying to continuously uh, answer most of those questions and try bring a lot of information and education. To the, to the viewers mm -hmm. and even going forward in terms of this discussion I think we will still have the discussion offline where we're able to respond to some of those questions right. but I think for other tax players um, firms like my, like, like KCK and only any, anyone else who's doing tax we have a responsibility to disseminate this information so that the Kenyan taxpayers are well informed for them to comply and understand the value of compliance mm -hmm. and avoid a lot of instances where there are penalties and uh, such like things. Incredible. Yeah. Wakili, Edwin Thiongo, Santi Sana, and we say that we have this. Uh, it mm -hmm. sticks on our pages or social media platforms mm -hmm. on that one for KCK. Mm -hmm. Could you be having social media pages so that mm -hmm. at least you can tell the people? <laughs> so they can always be accessing this information. Yeah, I guess true. we've touched on everything that mm -hmm. you know pertains to turnover tax mm -hmm. and we'll be doing more of this. Mm -hmm. And that's where the excitement is because then in the course of the week on the very same social media Mm. platforms will tell you what we'll be tackling next mm. next week right okay mm -hmm. yeah true social media platforms uh so uh we are going to uh, uh we, we already we're already on uh, available on instagram right. we're available on uh, facebook uh on linkedin uh the name is kck night castle and king if you search us on you'll see our hashtags are the same so you'll, all of them will pop up mm -hmm. uh we have a responsive team that is doing um, uh, the media support so anyone who uh has questions who has concerns they can simply look us up on our, on our, even on our website. We have right. an interactive website where you can get support and we'll be re uh, ready and willing to give assistance mm -hmm. in terms of responding to the questions that may, may arise from this discussion. And indeed, you'll be seeing the face of Wakili every other Tuesday. So make sure that you make it a date and you tell us what it is that you'd want us to tackle next. We'll definitely get to do that. This, in regards to matters tax, it's really important that we get to understand this. Like Wakili has rightfully put it, one of the main reasons why we evade paying taxes is simply because we do not have proper understanding. And therefore, if you get this proper understanding, then you realize it's pretty much of an easy ride. And therefore, you do not need to get in trouble with KRA for simply, you know, failing to understand what it is that was expected of you. Edwin Thiongo, tax lawyer with KCK, thank you so much. This has been a great session. And like I have rightfully said, you're going to get, you know, this... Uh, because actually we're streaming live and therefore you get, you know, this uh, sticking on our social media platforms. Hashtag Morning Cafe at Linda underscore Lela TV 47 KE across uh, Facebook and also YouTube. The very same names TV 47 KE or TV 47 Kenya. And you get to listen to this. The likes of Moses who had sent in questions, you know, he said, he says, I won't be able to watch that live because mm. I'll be in another meeting. Mm. Uh, can I get a link of the same? Yes, indeed. You go live on YouTube, you'll be finding this link there. And and more to matters tax we'll be discussing every tuesday it was good having you from the time we started and up until now we'll close it at that my name is linda lela i see you again tomorrow bye bye thank you <laughs>